So we already did the axis family. Now we're going to do the 45 degree family. And we're going to start by putting on our degrees and our radians. And then when we go to find our coordinates, we're going to look at a special triangle for the 45 degree family. And this might be something you looked at last year in grade 11. But what the family means when you're looking at a family, it means all the reference angles. So for each of these lines, the reference angle is 45. So we're going to write in degrees first. In quadrant two, what angle would have a reference angle of 45 degrees? 135. And what angle would have a reference angle of 45 in quadrant three? 225. And finally, 315. Perfect. Someone once noticed an interesting pattern in this class that all the 45 degree angle family members, if you look at the number in front of the 5 or the numbers in front of the 5 and you add them up, they always add up to 4. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 2 plus 2 is 4, 3 plus 1 is 4 kind of cool. What's the next one if you went past? Uh, 405. 405. And the first two digits add up to 4. What would the next one be? 495. 495. So if you add up 4 plus 9, what do you get? 13. But if you add up 13, you get 4 again. And it works no matter how big an angle you go to or not. All right. When we're dealing in radians, this is pi over 4. That's 45 degrees. And if we think about how this circle is cut up, can you see that 45 cuts this up into four equal sections along the top? So if we count by lines, does it make sense the first line would be pi over 4? This would be 2 pi's over 4. And this one would be 3 pi over 4. Then the next line would be 4 pi over 4. This would be 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. And all the way, that looks like a bad 4. And all the way around would be 8 pi over 4, which is the same as 2 pi. Now, you have some space in between your two families on your first page, sort of in this top right corner here, right? So what we're going to do there is make a little note, special triangle for the pi over 4 or 45 degrees. We'll do it in degrees for now. But if you draw a right angle triangle, so you can do sine, cos, and tan, and you put 45 degrees down here, what does that mean the other angle is? It's also 45 degrees, which means what kind of triangle is this? Besides being a right triangle, it's also an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangles have two angles that are the same. They also have two sides that are the same. Now, sine, cos, and tan works for any triangle, no matter how big or how small you make it. So we can randomly choose any number we want for the two sides that are the same. So for now, I'm just going to choose one. But you could have chosen 5, you could have chosen 10, you could have chosen 87.2, but 1 will make our math a little bit easier. Because now if we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, how long is the hypotenuse? Square root of 2. And with that triangle, if you look at that triangle and I ask you, what is sine of 45 degrees? What is cos of 45 degrees? And what is tan of 45 degrees? You can figure it out quite quickly. Sine of 45 degrees is 1 over root 2. And this time, if I did rationalize the denominator by multiplying by root 2 over root 2, this is the same as root 2 over 2. 
Can you see that cos of 45 is identical? So I'm going to write it as root 2 over 2 as well. And what's tan of 45? 1. So because we can make this triangle so easily, we could we just what we just did is we just figured out sine, cos, and tan of 45 degrees without our calculator. We didn't need a calculator to figure out what it was because we could draw a triangle and we could calculate it right from our triangle. Now, one of our big ideas was that the coordinates on the unit circle are what, comma, what? What's our big idea about the coordinates on the unit circle? They're cos, comma, sine. So what is cos of 45 degrees? It's root 2 over 2. And sine of 45 degrees? is also root 2 over 2. In quadrant 2, it'll be identical, except now your x coordinate's going to be negative because you're in qu quadrant 2. So it makes sense that when I go into quadrant 2, my x value is always going to be negative. And that also makes sense from our cast rule that cos being in quadrant 2, the x coordinate is negative but sine is positive. What's going to happen in quadrant 3? They're both going to be negative. And in quadrant 4, the x value will be negative, and the y value. I mean, the x value will be positive, and the y value will be negative. And fa finally, if we do tan, tan of pi over 4, it's equal to 1. That means tan of 3 pi over 4 has the same reference angle, but because it's in quadrant 2, will be negative. Tan of 5 pi over 4 will be positive. And tan of 7 pi over 4 will be negative 1. The pi over 6 family, or 30 degree family. There's 30 degrees, which is pi over 6 radians. I'll give you a five second head start on the degrees. They'll all have the same reference angle of 30 degrees. How did you do? I'll give you a 10 second head start on the radians. So how do you figure those things out in radians? Well, how did you figure out 150 when you did degrees? Did you go 180 minus 30? Is that what you did to find out 150? Did you do 180 plus 30 to get the 210? So if that's the way that you got the 150 and the way that you got the 210, that's also going to be helpful for figuring out 5 pi over 6 and the 7 pi over 6, because you're going to use the same idea. I want to find out what this 150 degrees is in radians. I'm going to go pi minus pi over 6. But in order to subtract fractions, what do you need? A common denominator. So right now it's pi over 1. Would you agree that 1 pi is the same as 6 pi over 6? 
And then if you go 6 pi over 6, six subtract pi over 6, you get 1 less, 5 pi over 6. And in quadrant 3, you get 1 more. And in quadrant 4, in quadrant 4, you would have 2 pi. And 2 pi is the same as, oh, this works out nice, 12 pi over 6. Didn't have to erase anything. And so it's just 1 less than 12 pi over 6, or 1 less than double. In fact, sometimes people like that as a way to find the angles quickly, right? This is 1 less than the denominator when you're subtracting. This would be 1 more. And this one in quadrant 4 is 1 less than double. Notice that that worked for the previous one. What's 1 less? 3 pi over 4. 1 more? 5 pi over 4. 1 less than double? 7 pi over 4. Now, between your 30 degree family and your 60 degree family, you've got some space down here, right? A little bit of space. So what we're going to do is we are going to, in this space right here, We're going to make a special triangle for both those families, the 30 degree and the 60 degree family, right at the same time. Because if we draw a right angle triangle and label this top angle as 30 degrees, what does that make that other angle? 60 degrees. Great. And this is a right triangle. But does this have any other special name? Like the last one was isosceles. What kind of triangle is this? Right, but yeah, how do we figure that out? How do we know that for sure? Okay, first of all, the name for this kind of triangle is scalene. And scalene is the name for a triangle that's not, is a special name for a triangle that's not special. So this is a not special triangle because there's nothing particular about it other than all the sides are different and all the angles are different and it really doesn't help you find out anything the way that it is right now. It's not special. And our previous triangle was isosceles, and because it was isosceles, we could say two sides were the same, and we could figure out the other side. But where there's nothing with this one right now that makes it special. However, if we duplicate it, if we take this exact same triangle, duplicate it, and flip it over, and draw the same thing on the other side, 30 degrees here again, 60 degrees over here, and put them together, it makes a bigger triangle, and that bigger triangle is special. Why is that bigger one special? Because it's equilateral. And what do we know about an equilateral triangle? All the sides are the same. So you're saying, I know that one is half of another one. Well, you can really see that now, because I can make this equilateral triangle as big or as small as I want, and I could pick anything for the side lengths. I'm going to choose two. I'm going to say that this side is 2, this side is 2, and the reason I'm picking 2 is that makes each of these sides 1, because that cuts it perfectly in half, because it's the identical triangle flipped over. And that bottom side together, in order to be an equilateral triangle, has to have a length of 2 as well. And then if we do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you will get this length here in the middle to be the square root of 3. So the 30-60 degree triangle by itself is not special, but if two not special things come together, it makes something special. And that makes the equilateral triangle together. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I don't know.
so from this triangle now, we can figure out sine of 30 degrees, cos of 30 degrees, tan of 30 degrees. We can also figure out sine of 60 degrees for our next triangle, cos of 60 degrees, and tan of 60 degrees. Sine of 30 degrees. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We're going to get 1 half. Cos of 30 degrees adjacent over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. And tan of 30 degrees opposite over adjacent, 1 over root 3. And we're going to rationalize that to write root 3 over 3. Sine of 60 degrees, well that's root 3 over 2, cos of 60 is 1 half, and tan of 60 is root 3 over 1, so we can write just root 3. So from that triangle, we can now label the coordinates on our unit circle. Cos of 30 degrees was root 3 over 2. Sine of 30 degrees was 1 half. In quadrant 2, the x coordinate will be positive, I mean negative. In quadrant 3, both coordinates will be negative. And in quadrant 4, the x coordinate will be positive, and the y coordinate will be negative. We can also use that special triangle, say tan of pi over 6 is root 3 over 3, tan of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 3, tan of 7 pi over 6 is positive root 3 over 3, and tan of 11 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 3. So once again, if you know what happens in quadrant 1, you know what happens in all the other quadrants for this family if you know the cast rule and where things are positive and where things are negative. Not for tan. Tan is root 3 over 3. If we look at our units are special triangle and cos is always root 3 over 2. So here we have our 60 degree family, pi over 3 family. There's our coordinate in quadrant 1. Can you see how similar that coordinate in quadrant 1 is to our coordinate for the 30 degrees? It's basically the same, just flipped. When things are basically the same, just flipped, your chances of mixing them up greatly increase than two things that are totally different. So you're going to go, oh, which one is which? Which one is root 3 over 2 comma 1 half, and which one is, is 1 half comma root 3 over 2? Now, this is a unit circle. That means that this point right here, which is, is part of the axis family, that's 0 comma 1, right? And this point right here is 1 comma 0. So let's look at our 30 degree family. If I look at that point, root 3 over 2 comma half, and I can't remember, is it the half go first with the x coordinate or does the half go with the y coordinate? Just have a look. Let's take a, a dotted line. Let's go straight down here to the x axis. Let's go straight across there the y-axis. Which one looks halfway, the y or the x? Okay. Does this look like this point here look like it's halfway to 1? Does this point look like it's halfway to, y, to 1 on the y? So just looking at where the point is at 30 degrees, you can say, oh, the half is the y-coordinate. 
Whereas if we look at our 60 degree family and I go straight across there and straight down there, where does it look like it's halfway? Along the x-axis. So that can help you figure out which is which. Once again, I'll give you a five second head start for your degrees. How did you do? And a 10, heck, 10 second start for your radians. Again, for figuring out your radians, you could do one less here, one more here, and one less than double in quadrant four. Another thing you could do for radians is you could think about the size of the piece. This is one pi over three, two pi over three, three pi over three, four pi over three, five pi over three, six pi over three, if you counted all the way around a circle. Labeling our coordinates. Negative one half comma root three over two. Negative one half negative root three over two. And one half negative root three over two. Tan of pi over three is root three. Tan of 2 pi over 3 is negative root 3. Tan of 4 pi over 3 is root 3. And tan of 5 pi over 3 is negative root 3. 